Designed for ease of use, crystal clear sound and highly flexible system configuration, the Altair G1 brings high performance, cutting edge technology and incredible value to any high fidelity audio system. Music can be streamed from virtually any source, locally stored files on your network, internet radio, airplay, Bluetooth, USB drive, an optional integrated hard drive, or a playlist of favorites from a subscription-based streaming service such as Cobus or Tidal. Control is via either the proprietary Lightning DS app or the manual intuitive control on the front panel with all functions clearly displayed on the high resolution color display. Completing the Altair G1's extensive feature set, there's full wireless utility, smart eye controlled learning, and an advanced digital volume control. I'm delighted to be joined by Richard Bates, UK and European Sales Marketing Director for Auralic, and David Price, Editor in Chief at StereoNet. Richard has spent most of his working life in audio. He was with Meridian for 20 years before going into retail for six years and then joining Auralic back in 2016. David started writing for Hi-Fi World back in 1993. He then went on to become editor of Hi-Fi Choice before taking up his current position with StereoNet. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. We're going to discuss the Auralic Altair G1, but before we do, David, perhaps you can tell me a little bit about your role at StereoNet. Yeah, so I joined StereoNet, um, I think it was last November, and um, StereoNet is, a, is basically, it's an online hi-fi magazine, but it has two main sites. It's got the Australia New Zealand site and the UK site, and I'm kind of overseeing the, the uh, content on both of those. Of course, it's pretty wide, uh, diverse and uh, uh eclectic collection of reviews there. I think it's true to say that the UK has got a more mature hi-fi industry than, yeah. uh, than Australia and New Zealand. It's a bit more analog, I think, actually, in the UK than there is on the Australian site. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the Australian side is more kind of technological, technology, digital streaming. But that's not to say that UK doesn't have that. It's just a slight different... Uh, different nuance. Richard, Aurelac has grown considerably over the last few years. I came on board with Ultimate Stream around about the time of the G2 series launch, which was then followed by the G1 Aries Streamer and the G1 Vega DAC. So what was it that made the company decide to launch the Altair Digital Streamer? I think, Steve, when we, when we launched G1, the G1 series, which was on the back of G2 series, um, there were two models, a Vega G1 DAC, a streaming DAC, and then an Aries G1, which was the digital streamer. So there were two quite different products serving different purposes. Um, a streaming DAC as a preamp to go into a customer's traditional amplifier and passive speakers, or an Aries G1 transport with purely a digital output to feed into a customer's existing converter or digital speakers. So we saw an opportunity to bring, amalgamate, if you like, those two products together and have all of the key features of both of those models in one unit, in one unit, at a, at a very attractive price. It's really a, a one, almost a one-stop solution for somebody who wants to have one product which will uh, encompass all of their music requirements so they could listen to their television through it, stream music services, board music on a hard drive, either internally or on a network or an attached USB drive. Or you could even, with an A to D converter, play a record player through it, a turntable. So it really does do, do everything all in one product at a very attractive price. David, this is a pretty crowded sector of the market with lots of competition, some good and some not so good. Your review gave the Altair five stars. What was it that made it stand above the competition? Well, I think you're right. I think there is um, uh, a lot of competition around now. Um, and uh, of course, it's not just from brands like Cyrus and NAD and, you know, the new Cord, Tugo, Hugo and, and the name ND5XS2, all those kind of rivals. Um, you've also got the kind of hobbyist side where people are making streamers, you know, out of their raspberry pies and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of choice now in the market. And, and that's really, really changed, I think, in the last few years. We've really 
seen the, the whole genre kind of come, come of age. Um, but what set the, um, the, the G1 out uh, for me was the, the idea of it as a package. Um, you know, it, it's a very complete kind of fully rounded solution. It, it offers a, um, a blend of strengths, if you like, that, that I think is, is particularly appealing to certain types of buyers. Um, you know, each brand obviously sells to its, its faithful customers and also sells to, uh, to people who simply want something to do a job. Um, and I think the, the, the Auralic has, has an appeal that it's a very, um, it's beautifully built. It's got a lovely silky kind of uh, control action. It's got a really good app, actually. It surprised me how, how good it is. Um, and um, you know, a nice display, which I think many people still still like. Not not every product has a good quality display, um, and and really um, impressive sound uh, as well. So it was a great all round uh, package, and it you, it kind of felt to me like a kind of baby high end product, really, a sort of affordable you know audiophile thing that. That, that does is a jack of all trades. It does a lot very well. I think it's going to attract people who don't want to fiddle around endlessly. Um, you know, it's, it's just going to be a kind of, I think, one step, one stop solution, I think, for, for a lot of people who just want a nice, really well made streamer sitting there in their system that they can just get on and listen to the music. Over the past few years, I think digital streamers have started to sound much more analog-like and less digital. Is that something that you'd agree with, David? You think back to the early days. I mean, let's go back to Logitech squeeze boxes and stuff like that. They sounded like, you know, you were kind of, your, your cranium was being drilled as you listened to the music. The modern streamers and modern DACs, um, I think are much smoother and more tonally balanced and have a kind of insight that, that, that you get without having detail Kind of machine gunned at you, and certainly the um, the uh, it's a ESS uh, Saber DAC chip, I believe, isn't it, uh, Richard? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, it it, it get, gets the job done very well. It's very even-handed and uh, and and capable, I think, um, in its way. Um, and you know, it doesn't sound as fizzy and as hashy and as noisy as uh, you know something uh, from maybe five or ten years ago. Certainly, ten years ago. I think the other thing that, that's, 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 that's happened over the years, David, also is the fact that um, so much music now, modern music particularly, is being mixed and mastered far more sympathetically. Yeah. Whereas years and years ago, you know, we've all got CDs we started off with however many years ago that sound really quite thin and shabby. They, they did back then even. I think now with uh, music that's mixed and mastered today, it's, it's, it's far better than it was many, many years ago. It's primarily mixed for the analog format. Um, the A to D converters back then weren't as good as they are, are today. Um, things are, are, are sounding a lot better than they, they have ever done. You know, good modern recordings um, do a lot of things right that, that maybe uh, others didn't. And certainly, you know, 20 years ago, we were still uh, listening to transcriptions of analog, classic analog recordings that were pretty crudely transferred to, to CD and uh, and... Um, you know, sometimes the EQ and all that kind of thing uh, wasn't wasn't done well. Um, so yeah, modern good modern recordings can sound really good now, and um, I think there's a bit of snobbery about uh, among in the hi-fi community about uh, you know sometimes uh, it's always the old stuff is always uh, better, but I'm not quite so sure that's always true. You know, I, I think the obviously the big improvement now is high high resolution. A to D converters and so on, using studios and high-res digital recording and so on. And of course, DCS were doing that sort of stuff in the late 80s, early 90s, but it was hardly mainstream. And um, yeah. so I think that, uh, you know, we are beginning now to get into a stage where, um, you know, high-res audio on new recordings is possible. And obviously, if you have a streamer, which is not format specific, you know, you don't need to go down to the HMV Megastore or whatever to buy to buy it on a certain format of disc. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you've got that great freedom now um, to, uh, yeah. to, to, to take things as they come. I think with the likes of uh, Cobus particularly and uh, a new service provider that we've just, in, just incorporated into our new app revision, uh, high resolution audio in Germany, 
Um, native content, 2444, 2448, 2496, native streamable from these service providers is sounding today really, really excellent. And again, prov providers like Cobus and, uh, and High Resolution Audio, they, they care about where they source their content from. I think the great thing about Cobus, and I love Cobus actually, um, because I was one of the old stick in the muds who... Uh, <laughs> Surely when, not, David. <laughs> I've been very late to streaming uh, because it was such a pain. It didn't sound as good as a, a, you know, a decent CD player. All the apps on the first or early generation ones didn't work and all the rest of it, or they crashed or whatever. Um, but now we're in a, a golden age, you know, you get onto Cobras or whatever and, and easily access high res music without having to bend over backwards to do it. And that's hugely liberating, I think. Richard, the, the Altair has a lot of features, internet radio, streaming with Cobras, Tidal, Spotify. It's got its own internal hard disk as an option for people who want to store their own music library on there. Uh, it's a Rune endpoint. Um, lots of different features. But it, one of the key things for me is that it's got its own app, Lightning DS. T tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, Lightning DS is our own, our, our own proprietary application that, that we developed way back in 2014, so five, six years ago. And we went from version one up to version six that we're on now. We're just about in the next week or so going to launch version seven. And we believe it's very important to have um, what I think one of the things that makes Aurelix such a compelling proposition as a complete system is that it's our own application, our own server, our own hardware, all together. And that gives you, as David just cited, a very engaging, nice experience to listen to music with the minimum of fuss and pain. You can listen to your music, search for music. You can now control your system through the application as well. Um, Again, with some of the online services, you can engage and get what we call booklet mode. Um, so you can look at uh, sleeve notes of particular artists' recordings whilst you're listening to them, which is which is a really nice touch. I understand there's a Lightning DS upgrade just around the corner. Yeah, there is indeed. And it will go live probably in the next week to 10 days with some very exciting new features. One big one, which is we're bringing CD ripping capability to all of our products. You can connect um, a CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, ripper drive, which isn't terribly expensive, um, to the USB port on the product. And within the application or via the desktop web interface, you can choose to either play a CD in play mode, play a CD as you normally would, and skip through tracks in the app, or alternatively engage auto-ripping mode where you just post your disc in and it will rip the disc, go get the album artwork, the metadata, and then channel that data to either the internal storage within the product or to a connected USB drive to the product or a network attached storage drive, an AS drive. That's so a that, feature, that is. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing that we've been working on for a very long time. Um, again, it's all our own proprietary technology and uh, we, we're just about set to, uh, to get that out. So. I think once we have that, that, that really does give us an all-encompassing product that will do pretty much everything. Just add a pair of um, digital speakers or an analog amplifier and um, you have an Aurelix system, which, which will work really, really nicely. David, I was interested. In your review, you said you were clearly able to signpost the differences between earlier and more modern-day recordings. You also said that you found yourself playing more music than you have done for a long time. Can you explain this? What I liked about the G1 was that I was just able to, you know, get it going, sit down, bang, you know, get the iPad out or whatever, and, and you're off. And then you've really unlocked the power of, of, of a modern streamer, haven't you? If you can do that without having yeah. to re reboot your computer every 10 minutes and go and switch your router on and off and stuff. So I found it really usable. The other thing, of course, is that it's fine if it's really easy to use, but if it sounds dreadful and you don't want to play it, then, you know, what's the point? Um, so I thought the, the G1 had a good combination of ease of use and really good sound quality. It's, uh, you know, it's open and clean and transparent enough, uh, especially for something of its price. You know, we're not talking a, a DCS Bartok uh, price here. Um, 
to to kind of unlock the recording so you can you know you can zing from kind of 60s uh, late 60s rock classics like uh, you know Crosby Stills Nash and Young's uh, you know Deja Vu to to sort of modern uh, you know kind of drum and bass or something <laughs> Um, quite easily and you can hear the difference in sound quality you can hear the difference in recording and mastering and all the rest of it quite explicitly um, and obviously that shows a good uh, you know sound attention to detail in, in, in the engineering of it. The Altair is not only a DAC streamer but a preamplifier as well. I often get customers asking me whether a unit like the Altair can replace a good quality preamplifier in a system. Have you got a view on this? If, you, if you've basically got a digital source system, um, then uh, you, you don't really need analog inputs um, and uh, you don't really need a, you know, a plethora of different, uh, you know, sort of phono inputs for different cartridges and so on. So if you're focused on digital, then there's a good argument to use it as a kind of DAC preamplifier. And I used it, uh, I don't think I mentioned it in the review, but I've got a really, uh, a beloved uh, world audio design valve amplifier uh, that I've had for many years and that's been very heavily tweaked and uh, it's a power amp uh, and I use the, uh, the the G1 as a uh, you know uh, to control that and uh, you know it works very well so you can do that um, you can it mean it basically means if you're not heavily into analog you can uh, you can kind of work around it it's not going to be the sound quality equal of a two thousand pound analog preamplifier, put it that way, um, in, in, in one sense. But as a digital, no. digital device, it's perfectly good, I think, um, to be the heart of a, a, a medium price digital system, certainly. And of course, a, a stage up from the Altair is the, the Vega G2, which rather unusually for a DAC, has a built-in analog input as well. Well, it sounds like a big thumbs up for the G1 Altair. But Richard, what's around the corner now for Auralic? Lots of exciting things planned. Um, so just around the corner we have, we're introducing a new G2.1 series. And this is really a, a, a revision to the G2 series that we launched some three years ago at uh, the Munich High End Show. A, a lot of the technology from G2 came down into Altair G1. So G2 really furthers, furthers the cause. It's, it, it's higher quality, higher quality components with a lot of segregation of componentry. So for instance, with G2.1, you can build a four box system should you wish to do so. So all of these, the first products will come along will be the Aries G2.1 and Vega G2.1 uh, early June. And then shortly thereafter, Leo GX21 and the uh, Sirius G2. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I'm sure our paths will cross again in the not too distant future. Thank you, Steve. Pleasure to talk as always. And David, good to speak with you. And uh, yeah, let's do this again sometime. Cheers, guys. Take care. Thank you.